everyone, welcome to The Mudroom, our weekly free and live on Common Sense Parenting class. How is everybody today? I hope you're well. I'm a little bit out of sorts today, fair warning. Um, if you thought my brain and my mouth were out of sync last week, buckle up. <laughs> I didn't get any sleep last night. Like, almost none. I have been working my butt off getting our new parentability web portal ready to go. So I've been pulling some late nights to try and get everything sorted out quickly. And then I'm sure every mother can relate to having difficulty turning your brain off once you actually do get in bed because you just have like all the to-do lists running through your head. So I probably didn't drift off until like 1 a.m. And then at 3, I woke up to my kids screaming and my husband freaking out because there was an alarm going off on my kids' Echo Flex in their bedroom, which made no sense because I definitely didn't set any alarms, but it turns out that my youngest had been playing with it the day before and he set a 12-hour timer at 3 p.m. So that was now ringing at 3 a.m. And we turned the microphone off on their device when they go to sleep so that they can't like mess with it while they're sh they should be in bed or sh they can't be like asking it questions and stalling. Um, so they were yelling at it to turn off and it wasn't. <laughs> and I was in that awful state that you go into when you've like just been woken up out of REM sleep and you feel kind of physically sick. But then I was so full of adrenaline that I never got back to sleep. So <laughs> yeah, just in case anyone is under the impression that my children must be angels on earth and that we're living in a bed of roses over here. No, <laughs> we're not perfect. And I am running on energy drinks and coffee. So, you know, let's go. All right, before we get into our topic today, allow me to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Alana Robinson, and I help parents of toddlers, preschoolers, and kindergartners understand why their children misbehave and how to fix it without yelling, shaming, or timeouts. I'm your host here on The Mudroom. I'm also the host of the Parenting Posse Facebook group. If you're not a member yet, please come join us. And I am the creator of the Parentability Program, where I help you raise well-behaved kids of your own. So if you're watching, please say hi. Let me know how you're doing today. If you're watching a replay, drop a replay in the comments. And don't forget to like on Common Sense Parenting and subscribe so that you never miss a class. Okay, so something that keeps coming up with parents in the posse is that you understand the theory. You get why timeouts and blanket strategies like behavior charts and bribes and punishments don't work. You understand what stress is and how it blocks your child's ability to behave well, and you understand the role that skills play and how their absence makes it impossible for your kids to meet your expectations. You got it. But, the royal but, you just don't have time. You don't have time to be messing with the logical consequence process. You think it has too many steps. Figuring out stressors and filling their energy tank or building skills. You're busy. And all these things sound like they're going to take a whole lot of time and effort. You just want your kids to listen to you and to do it quickly. Is that too much to ask? If they could just do that, then all your problems would be solved, right? So I'm going to ask you to humor me here a little bit. And I'd like you to grab a pen and paper or pull up a notes app on your phone. And I want you to write down a situation where you just needed your kids to listen and they didn't. And if you're comfortable, I'd love for you to share it with me in the comments. Okay. Write down a situation where you told your kids to do something and they didn't do it. They either did the opposite or they flat out refused or they whined about how they couldn't do it. Okay, everybody got a scenario? Hey, Jill. Thanks for being here. It doesn't have to be a big, complicated scenario, okay? It can literally be like, I asked them to clear their plate from the table and instead they threw it across the room. That one seems actually be a one that comes up in various variations. <laughs> Quite frequently. 
or, you know, I told them to clean up and instead they laid down on the floor and they cried. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be a long story. I just want you to think of a situation that you've actually been in, not a hypothetical situation. Think back to an actual situation where you asked them to do something, you just needed them to listen, and they wouldn't. Now, I want you to estimate how much time you spent doing the following. Okay, again, loose estimation. It doesn't have to be, you know, time down to the second. I just want you to think about approximately how much time you feel like you spent on these three things. Three things, two things, two things. One, how much time did you spend coercing, cajoling, and demanding that they listen? Okay, just an estimate. Did you spend five minutes? Did you spend 10 minutes, two minutes, an hour? Make an educated guess. How much time did you spend trying to convince them to listen to you? Okay, this can sound like I need you to listen. It can sound like reiterating the same expectation over and over and over. It can sound like trying to modify the expectation so that it's slightly more palatable to them. Like, if you clean up, then I'll give you ice cream. <laughs> or if you just clean up the dinosaurs, I'll do everything else. Right? How much time did you spend in that situation that you have in your head? or on paper, or on your phone, doing that, okay? Educated guess. Second, how much time did you spend enforcing a timeout? Or enforcing a behavior chart, threatening a behavior chart, or threatening a punishment, or enforcing a punishment, putting them back in timeout when they left, standing there to make sure that they stayed in timeout, telling them about the horrible punishment that they're going to get while they completely ignored you. Okay. Again, just an estimate. Doesn't have to be hard numbers. Uh, Jill says she gets ignored a lot. Just this morning I looked at her with her looking at me and told her to put her shoes on, please. She ran off. Sometimes she says she didn't hear me. Sometimes I ask her what I said and she repeats it. Yep. That would be a, a, a wonderful example. <laughs> For number for a scenario where you asked your child to do something and they just didn't listen. Um, hey, Sarah. Sarah says, I asked him to eat his peas and then he threw his entire plate on the floor. Yeah. See? That example of kids throwing their plate on the floor, it just keeps coming up. <laughs> um, Jill says she usually spends maybe one to two minutes trying to do it on her own. Then I ask if she needs help. If she says no, I do it. Generally, then she helps. But there's also a lot of times she wants me to do everything. Cleaning up is just too hard. Alrighty. Excellent. Okay. So again, you don't have to share it in the comments. Um, but it's nice to hear other people's experiences. Um, I do know that I'm asking very personal questions, though. Third, see, there was three. Third, how much time do you spend dealing with a meltdown or a tantrum as a result of one and two. Okay. Where they're crying, they're screaming on the floor. Um, a tantrum can also be whining and I just can't do it. It's too hard. Right? Like that I'd consider a tantrum as well. <laughs> How much time do you generally spend once you reach the point where they're melting down and freaking out, getting them back to calm. Okay? So once you have those three numbers, I want you to add all that time up. And again, if you want to share your number with me in the comments, I'd love that, but only if you feel comfortable. So I know that when I do this exercise with private clients, or even with daycare teachers when I'm doing professional development workshops, I generally get numbers in the 20 to 90 minute range. So that's generally my baseline, okay? That is not quick. 
the initial intervention, sending them to time out or yelling at them or, you know, threatening them with taking away a toy, sure, that takes seconds. But you aren't actually solving your problem in those seconds, are you? It's taking you between 20 minutes and an hour and a half to solve the problem and move on. And most of the feedback that I get is, that's how long it takes to move on, but the problem isn't actually solved. The thing you needed them to do generally isn't done. And often you tell me that you got frustrated and you ended up doing it yourself. Usually the child is still upset and usually you're still upset. And sometimes you're doing this two to five times a day. That's a lot of wasted time with nothing really to show for it. In contrast, yes, the logical consequence process takes about 10 minutes to do at first, but that's just at first. 10 minutes is still half the time most people are telling me that their timeouts take. But that's just how long it generally takes at first while you're learning the process. The process is designed to get shorter the more proficient you and your child get at using it. And the same applies to stressors and skills. Yes, at first there is a significant time investment in observing, discovering stressors and skills. No two kids are alike, so it takes some time to figure out exactly what is going on with your kid. And I think that might be what scares some parents. There seems to be this perception that strategies should work for everyone the exact same. And if they don't, there's either something wrong with your child or there's that you're doing it wrong. And that's just not the case. We're individuals. Our children are individuals. Everybody has their own quirks and needs and ways that they see the world. So while everyone has stressors and weak skills, that's basically where the similarities end. Customizing strategies to your child, figuring out what works for them, takes time. But unlike these blanket strategies like timeouts and punishments and reward charts, it is a time investment. With all those blanket strategies, they keep you stuck. They keep you reliant on them. And the moment you apply them inconsistently, the whole system breaks down. Logical consequences teach your children how to think critically. One second. Hey, buddy, what's up? You're hurt? Where did you hurt? You've got grass in your hair. What happened? We were playing cops and water, and the monkey tried to get me to the cell. Did you fall? No, Logan fell with me. Logan fell on top of you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, where does it hurt? Everywhere. Everywhere? Can I give it a kiss? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, Mommy's still doing her video. Okay. No, it's almost done. Can you close the door, please? And then I'll come out and figure out the situation, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, we can go swimming after. Okay, go have a granola bar. I'll be there in a couple of minutes, okay? Sorry about that. (laughs) Trials of being a work-at-home mom. Okay, where were we? We were talking about... Oh, blanket strategies. Right, okay. So blanket strategies, like timeouts and punishments and reward charts, they aren't a time investment, they're a time suck. They are designed to keep you stuck. They keep you reliant on them. And the moment that you apply them inconsistently, the whole system breaks down, okay? Logical consequences teach children how to think critically. So after a while, you barely have to apply them anymore because your children can think through the process and fix their own problems. They learn how to deal with 
or eliminate their own stressors and how to keep themselves regulated so you don't have to facilitate it anymore. My son coming in here was just a beautiful example. About a year ago, he wouldn't have been able to keep himself calm when he hurt himself like that. But because we've worked through it multiple times, I know what his stressors are, I know how to help him figure out how to regulate himself. He just really needed to come in here and get a kiss, and then he was pretty much on his way. He had a few other complaints, but <laughs> for the most part, he just needed a kiss and to be, you know, reassured that he was fine. A year ago, that would have been an hour and a half meltdown, right? Their weak skills get stronger. <laughs> So you don't have to compensate for them anymore. Um, we are literally parenting our way out of a job. So it takes some time investment on the front end. But even then, it's less time than most parents are telling me that they're wasting on blanket strategies. Would you rather spend 10 minutes disciplining your kids and having that 10 minutes gradually reduced to nothing? Or would you rather spend an hour and continue spending an hour because the moment you stop, the behavior comes right back? I don't know about you, but that kind of seems like a no-brainer to me. <laughs> so it's not that you don't have time. You just don't want to have to think about it. Most parents don't want to have to think about discipline. They want it to be easy and automatic, and I get it. We all have so much on our plates and so much on our minds that having to think about discipline feels kind of daunting, really daunting. But the irony is that they end up spending way more time thinking about it and doing it than if you just did some of the prep work ahead of time and stop in the moment to think about what's going on and how this behavior that you're seeing fits into those three pillars and then respond based on that, knowing that in that process, your child is learning how to do it for themselves. You have to do it for them now, yes, <laughs> because they're young. They're two to six years old. Owen here just turned four in June. But as they get older, they're learning to take it on and do it themselves. It kind of blows me away how little I have to discipline my almost seven-year-old right now. Like, because he's been gradually strengthening his skills, becoming aware of his stressors, learning how to think critically since he was two. I bet when I go out there that they'll have already figured out whatever happened. Sounds like he somehow fell on the little one. All I really have to do at this point is generally prompt him by using a declarative statement or being like, hey, check yourself. How are you feeling? To get him to recognize that he's getting stressed. And I mean, how awesome would that feel to be able to just prompt your kids to take stock and have them solve their own problems? But that doesn't happen overnight. We saw Owen still needed help doing it. It doesn't happen when you apply the same blanket strategy to every kid in every situation. It just doesn't happen without having to think about it a little bit. So how does that feel? <laughs> Again, you don't have to tell me, but I'd love for you to be really honest with yourself. Is it that you don't have time or that you don't want to have to think about it? And if it's that you don't want to have to think about it, I encourage you to do an audit of how much time you're actually spending versus how much time you perceive you're spending on discipline, because I bet that it's way more than you think. And if you're spending a lot of time on a strategy that isn't actually getting you results, you may want to reconsider and think about, it might be time to try something new. Now, if you want to learn more about those three pillars I talked about and how they all work together to create good behavior, I invite you to attend my free workshop, How to Raise Well-Behaved Kids Without Yelling, Shaming, or Timeouts. It's about an hour long, and in it, we go through the entire Uncommon Sense Parenting System, how it works, and how it can get you unstuck in solving your child's behavioral struggles in just minutes a day. Classes run several times a day, so pick a time that works best for you, and the link for that is in the description. All right.
that's it. Apologize again for the little interruption there. <laughs> Jill says that was so cute. Oh, he's a sweetheart, but he is going through the limbic leap. And I knew that his limbic leap was going to hit like a Mack truck um, because he is just a more emotional child than my oldest. But throw the pandemic on top of it. And yeah, he's been kind of blowing the roof off a couple times a week. Um, but I'm proud of him for how quickly he was able to recover there. Okay. Well, have a great week. And I'll see you again next week for another Uncommon Sense Parenting class. Bye.